Principle 4, Establish Procedures to Monitor Critical Control Points. We have to go through and monitor. If we don't monitor, then we can't go through and understand if we're getting better or if we're getting closer towards being out of compliance. Monitoring. It's a planned sequence of observations or measurements to assess whether a CCP is under control and to produce an accurate record for future use in verification. Monitoring. Procedures are those things that are done routinely. Uh, the biggest thing about doing it routinely is to go through and prove that hey, we did it enough. We were consistent enough to go through and make sure that we didn't miss anything getting out of compliance. We didn't make any products outside of the safety line. We didn't cross the boundary. So routine is pretty big. Monitoring procedures routinely, either by employee or by mechanical means, which measures the process at a given CCP. The reason it has mechanical means is so that if you're using a metal detector and creates a record for future use, Mechanical means can also mean a cook chart log to where you have a cooker, an oven that will go through and draw or record what the temperatures were and how long they stayed there. So that chart or that log can go through and work as well. It's a scheduled testing or an observation of CCP insulin. Its monitoring results must be documented. From the monitoring standpoint, failure to control a CCP is a critical defect and may result in a hazardous or unsafe product. Continuous monitoring best, but if you can't go through and do it best, then you should go through and uh, have your team decide what will be non-continuous and how frequently you'll go through and do it. Monitoring will go more smoothly if management agrees. You know, uh, management agrees. Uh, what are the critical limit values? Uh, how are you going to go through and measure them? Who is going to go through and measure them? And how often they're going to go through and measure them? Identifies clearly the employee position responsible for monitoring. It's best if you don't just have one person, but you have positions, meaning that you have multiple people at different levels that can go through and be responsible. Because what happens if somebody goes on vacation during the summertime? Do you just shut down your plant and wait for them to come back? No. You got to go through and have multiple people. Trains employees monitoring the CCP in the testing procedures. Critical limits established, the methods of recording test results, and the actions to be taken when critical limits are exceeded. Ensures that employees understand the purpose and the importance of monitoring. And like I say, that's going to be buy-in from your employees. Monitoring purposes. Uh, three main purposes. Monitoring is essential, essential to food safety management in that it facilitates tracking of the operation. If monitoring indicates that there is a trend toward loss of control, then action can be taken to bring the process back into control before a deviation from the critical limit occurs. That goes to also say as far as operational monitoring, right? If you recognize that you're getting out of that operational compliance, you shouldn't ever be out of uh, critical control point compliance. You know, you should never go over that critical limit because you called it on operational limits. Monitoring used to determine when there's a loss of control and deviation occurs. Uh, it helps you to understand that you need to go through and take corrective actions. Monitoring provides written documentation for use and verification. And that's one of those to where if you need to go to court, you may need to go through and prove that, hey, we did what we needed to and here's how we monitored it and how often we monitored it. To prove that, hey, our cooking mechanism or our uh, oven did get to that temperature and it stayed there for a long enough period of time. Non-continuous monitoring checks, you can go through and, and perform sufficiently enough or sufficiently often to accurately reflect the process under control. Now if you've got a freezer and you go through and you keep that freezer at, at uh, zero degrees, you can go through and understand, hey, it's going to go through and take a while for it to warm up. You can you know, go through and have non-continuous monitoring to go through and make sure that, hey, as long as the freezer is at uh, zero when we come in in the morning, at zero when we go out at night, realistically, we know that's going to go through and take greater than 12 hours for it to get up to 28 degrees, you're fine. And that's, that's what it says sufficiently often. 
the capacity of the plant to take corrective actions when monitoring procedures reveal that there have been deviations from those critical limits is required. You know, uh, how soon will you catch it? I mean, that's that's the question there. Need for rapid real time feedback. How soon will you catch it? If you uh, if you can't catch it soon enough, then you may make unsafe product, and then you will be responding or reacting rather than catching something before it happened. Employees monitoring CCP should be trained. They should be fully aware of the purpose and importance of why you're doing it. They should have complete access to the CCP. If it's one of those to where the boss doesn't want them having access because they will go through and stop production and he doesn't want to stop to production to stop, well then they don't have full access. They must record exact values where exact values are indicated. Again, ranges do not work. Examples of monitoring procedures. Employee observations are checked, such as checking the documentation accompanying incoming materials. They may be going through and looking at those letters of guarantee to make sure that they are getting what they said they were getting or what they're getting what they're trying to buy. Also, records from instruments such as recording thermometers going through them and recording what was the time, what was the temperature over the time. Monitoring ensures control of CCP by scheduled testing of observations for the what, where, who, when, and how. Be careful. Don't paint yourself into a corner. Can you monitor it? And can you monitor as much as you say that you're going to do? And what happens if it goes up to one degree? Are you now out of compliance even though the product was still safe? So the old rule of thumb and still really most companies abide by it today. They make it so that the critical limit is something that is safe, but at the same point, it's something that they are able to meet. Principle five, corrective action must be taken when there's a deviation. Corrective action, actions that uh, eliminate the actual or potential hazard. It might not have occurred yet. You may just recognize that, hey, something's about to occur. You go through and you start working on it. Yeah. Which has created by deviation from the hazard plan and assure safe disposition of the product. Deviation uh, actions must be documented in the HACCP plan and agreed to by the appropriate regulatory agency prior to approval of the plan that, hey, what you're going to go through and do is eventually going to be good enough. If safety is not an issue, government consultation is not required. If it's just one of those where you're doing it for your own quality inside the plant, then you don't need to go through with the USDA or FSIS or FDA involved. Four features of corrective actions. Has the cause of the deviation been identified and eliminated? Will the CCP be under control after the corrective action has been taken? We went through and we took it away and we destroyed it or we fixed the cooler or did it fix it? Have measures to prevent recurrence of the deviation been established? Do the corrective action procedures make sure that no product which is injurious to health or otherwise adulterated uh, because of that deviation? Has it entered commerce? Has it gotten into the market? Corrective actions. They may include, uh, or they should include, causes of the deviation so it can be identified, eliminated, can be tracked. You can go through and see if, hey, if this happens every year in June, find out why it's happening in June. If it happens a lot when this person goes on vacation or takes time off of work, what were they doing to go through and keep everything in check? The CCP, so it will be understood, uh, so it will be under control, so that it will be uh, able to be recorded after that corrective action is taken. The establishment of appropriate measures so that a reoccurrence can be avoided and the affected food so that no product would be injurious to health in going out into commerce. Corrections. You know, I can't use white out. Can't go through and scratch through it. Corrective actions must be taken when monitoring indicates a specific CCP is out of or is moving out of control. If you are not in compliance, you've got to figure out how to fix it. Must be done when critical and is exceeded or not achieved. Principle six: Establish defective, or excuse me, establish effective record-keeping systems that document that has a plan to make sure that you're doing what you're saying you're doing. 
Record keeping is an essential feature of HACCP. Must be carried out carefully. Uh, must be developed and maintained about both plan development and the operation of the system. Best record keeping is usually the simplest one that can be easily integrated into the existing operation so that you're not having to go through and do double work. Asset plan must be on file on the premises and made available to government inspectors upon request. That's a big one. Advantages of record keeping. You can prove that you've done what you said that you're going to do, pure and simple. You can find out what you had to go through and do later on or in the future if something went wrong. Hey, this is how we fixed it last time, right? Or this is how we tried to fix it last time. Let's don't do that again because obviously it didn't work. So record keeping has multiple benefits. Setting up that record system, think about who will be the best position to make the record entry. Who will go through and do it most reliably? Who will go through and make sure that it is correct as to what it's supposed to be? Think about making simple, understandable forms that will work well in your situation. So that, again, if it's too complicated, people won't want to do it. They'll dread it. They'll wait until it's out of compliance. So they'll wait until they've got four or five that they need to go through and make sure that everything's all done right. But that's not what's going to go through and make sure that you have all safe product leaving the plant. Records. Three types of records. Uh, in hazard analysis records uh, of practices that keep hazards from likely occurring, such as cleaning procedures, employee training. If you've got trained employees, they are going to be able to go through and identify stuff a lot easier and want to help your company. Asset plan and reassessments. You're going to go through and need validations. Those may come from those uh, challenge tests where you actually went through and inoculated your food product. And then you'll go through and you'll have verifications on there as well. Operating records, such as operating records of critical limits, calibrations. How often did you go through and, and calibrate those thermometers? Principles, seven. Establish verification procedures. So these are the seven principles. We're, we're at the last one. You know, you hear has some seven principles. Here's the last of the seven principles. Verification. You want somebody to go through and verify that somebody was monitoring Verification by a third party is best to remove bias and vested interest. Because, I mean, hey, why would somebody, or it's very difficult to go through and convince somebody that's within the company to go through and speak bad about the company. They may, at that point, be afraid because they may be feeling that they're a whistleblower or that they are, they're a bad guy by going through and saying that the company did something wrong. Verification. Those activities other than monitoring that determine the validity of the HACCP plan and that, the, and that verify the system is operating according to the plan. Verification provides a level of confidence that the HACCP plan is based on solid science and is adequate enough to go through and control those hazards associated with the food product. Three types of verification. You need to go through and validate. You need to go through and have ongoing verification. And then you get to go and have reassessment of your HACCP plan. Validation. Element of verification focused on collecting and evaluating scientific technical information to determine if the HACCP plan, when properly implemented, will effectively control the hazards. So this is one of those to where you go through and you do this in the initial phases so that you can make sure that your plan will do what it says it's going to go through and do. Ongoing. This ensures that the HACCP plan is working on a day-to-day -day basis. Everything's rolling like it should. You've got calibration. You've got monitoring. You've got reviewing your HACCP plans. Everything is going as it should. Then you have reassessment. You want to have reassessment at least annually so that you go back through your HACCP plan. You may have changed something. Process, flow diagram, changing an ingredient. Those things do make a difference. It's similar to validation because it considers whether the plan is adequate in general rather than focused on the plan's daily operations. Right? It must be done by the HACCP trained person. That could be you. Suggested guidelines for elements of the HACCP plan. Designate a person responsible for the HACCP plan. Members of the HACCP team. Organize the HACCP product safety system within and as a part of that company quality assurance program. Uh, we're going to go through and we're going to pick up here as far as number three in the next video. The next video is only going to go through and be uh, five minutes to make sure that we get everything covered.
See you then.